All right, um, giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem, Kodesh. Shalom to the Lord's elect, the elect men and women of the nation of Israel. And uh, <clears throat> you're looking at the title of this video. This will be another episode of uh, early morning thoughts and topics. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it's 7.02 in the morning. Today's date is November 6, uh, 2024. And that'll be the title of this video. Concerning America, which is known in the Bible as Babylon the Great. Only Israelites to be delivered will be the elect. Only Israelites to be delivered by Yahweh Shai will be the elect. That's it. And that's the reality of it. And Great Millstone and our true affiliates, we're the only ones that really push that, that, uh, that truth that the only ones or the only Israelites that will be delivered from Babylon the Great, which is known um, today as America, okay, will be the elect, the elect of the nation of Israel. And the elect, they go into many different names. The Church of the Firstborn, the Church of the First Fruits, the Most High's Prized Possession. All right, so it's all about the elect. Now, if any Israelite group out there is not teaching that, then they really don't have the 100% truth. Because it's all about the elect. Let's go to the first scripture. I didn't write down any list, so I'm just going to go according to the Spirit, see what the Spirit will feed me. Concerning that topic, the first scripture that comes to mind is Matthew, the 24, I always quote it, and, you know, I always meditate on it, Matthew, the 24th chapter, when Yahweh Shai comes back, which we're patiently waiting for, who's he going to gather out of the Israelites? He's only going to gather the elect. Let's read it. This is Matthew 24 and 29. This is under, <coughs> under the section, the glorious return. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be dark. And this is when the nuclear destruction comes in. You know, also the uh, destruction being brought by Yahweh Shai and the angels. We know that Yahweh Shai, when he comes back, he's, he's coming back to wage war against the Edomites. That's Isaiah 63 and 1, Isaiah the 47th chapter. We know that he's coming back with an army of angels. And they're going to be in these so-called UFOs, chariots. He himself is going to be in the chariot, leading the pack, so to speak. And he's going to wage war against the Edomites and the other nations and their armies. Okay? And that's all scriptural. As a matter of fact, he said he's coming, he's coming back to, to bring fire upon the planet Earth. Okay? In particular, America. Certain parts of the planet Earth are going to be engulfed by fire. But America in particular, is going to be engulfed by fire 100%. When you combine the nuclear missiles along with the chariots of the Lord, this place is going to be turned into a lake of fire. Now, the only ones delivered out of that lake of fire will be the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay? Everybody else will die. They will die straight up and down. They will die. This will be their graveyard. America, okay? And I'm mainly focusing on America, all right, which is the main uh, place of deliverance, America, which is known as Babylon the Great. There are many Israelites that live here in America, the, the various different states. This is what I'm focusing on in this lesson, America. Of course, as it is written, the elect will be delivered around the world. we got brothers around the world that are part of the elect, you know, uh, chosen to be delivered by Yahweh Shai, but the main focus is America, Babylon the Great. So let that be understood in this video. So Isaiah 66 and 15, let's read about the return of our Lord, how he's coming back. This is a prophecy here. Isaiah 66 and 15, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. To render his anger. The chariots is talking about are the so-called UFOs. That's what the uh, the individual known as Elisha. That's what he called them when he when he saw them. When 
they came to abduct uh, his mentor, Elijah. Okay, the prophet Elijah, all right, was the mentor of Elisha. And um, when Elisha saw those chariots, the so-called UFOs, coming to get Elijah to abduct him, and Elijah told him that. Elijah said, look, when you see, when you see um, me taken away from you, you will receive what you asked for, which is he wanted a double portion of Elijah's spirit. So he actually saw Elijah being abducted by a so-called UFO chariot into the heavens. All right. He called them, Elisha called them the chariots of Israel. And that's what they are. What the so-called white man calls the UFOs, which are unidentified flying objects. That's what UFO stands for, an acronym. What they really are, according to the Bible, is the chariots of Israel. The chariots of Israel, and only Israelites can get on those so-called UFOs. That's why they're called the chariots of Israel. So when Yahushua, that's a clue right there. When Yahushua comes back with those so-called UFOs, the chariots of Israel, who are they going to gather? Israelites of the elect. That's a clue right there. They're called, matter of fact, you know what? Let me go to the scripture, man. Second Kings. Second Kings. So don't listen to these wacky tacky Christians talking about God and God is going to save everybody or God can save anybody. Only only ones being saved in America, Babylon the Great, are the Israelites, the elect at that. Point blank in the story. Anybody teaching anything different, they are not known the scriptures. They're a false prophet, they're a false teacher, and they will be dealt with, man. Because they're, they're speaking lies against the Most High's word. It's as simple as that. 2 Kings 2 and 12. Now, look at the subheading here. Elijah taken to heaven. He was abducted. He was abducted by a so-called UFO, chariot. And what did Elisha, who was with him, what did Elisha call them? Well, we're going to read it so you can see it for yourself. Those of you, especially those of you who may be new to the scripture. 2 Kings 2 and 12. Okay, let me get that part where, where Elijah, he asked for, Elisha asked for, a double portion of Elijah's spirit. Okay. I want to get that point. Let's see. Here it is right here. Second Kings 2 and 9. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha. At, now both Elijah and Elisha were what? They were Israelites. That was their nationality. Okay, they were Israelites. Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken up or before I be taken away from thee. And, Elish and Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, thou, ha thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it, and it came to pass as they still went on. So they're walking, right? They're walking and they're talking. As they, they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. Now, the reason why it says a chariot of fire, meaning the chariots, the lights are so bright, it looks like it's on fire. That's how bright the lights are. And in some cases, actual fire can come out of these chariots. Laser beams of fire, concentrated fire. That's what Yahweh Shai is coming with. So-called UFOs, man. Okay? Uh, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire. The same thing, chariots. They could... They, uh, many metaphors are used to describe those so-called UFOs, those chariots. Well, as in UFO, chariot, horses of fire, okay? And parted them both asunder, right? So, for lack of a better term, a, a beam of light came down and parted the two, parted Elisha from Elijah, because Elijah was getting ready to be abducted, taken up into that so-called UFO, taken up into that chariot. And by the way, that's how the elect are going to be delivered. They're going to be taken up into the chariots. Okay, and we can read we can read that in uh, First uh, First uh, Thessalonians, the uh, the the what the fourth chapter, I believe it is. Okay, 
It says, they appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up into went up by a whirlwind. That's another metaphor for the so-called UFO chariot, a whirlwind. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. See that? And here's the point. And Elisha saw it. Now remember, Elijah told Elisha, when you see that, you, you will receive a double portion of my spirit. So Elisha saw it and he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel. See? So only Israelites can be on those chariots, the chariots of Israel. So when Yahweh Shai comes back with those so-called UFOs, those chariots, who's he going to gather, huh? He's going to gather Israelites and the elect of that. Okay? Now, anybody teaching anything different, they are not knowing the scriptures. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit is not working with them. They're lying on the Most High's word, and eventually they're going to be destroyed. It's as simple as that, man. Okay? And Elisha saw it. And he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. Right. In other words, Elijah was taken off the planet Earth. In other words, what you call death, that's what death is, where you're taken off the planet Earth. You go into the spirit world. That's where Elijah went. He went into the spirit world. But instead of going the normal way as, a, as by death, he was just abducted right into the spirit world. And that's why Elisha saw him no more. Okay? And Elijah saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof, meaning the other chariots that came with that chariot that abducted Elijah. Okay? It says, And he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. Okay? Let's read that in the NLT. Elisha saw it and cried out, my father, my father, I see the chariots and the charioters of Israel. Again, of Israel. And as they disappeared from sight, Elisha tore his clothes in distress. Yeah, he was, he was already missing his mentor, which was Elijah. Okay? Now, Yahushua himself was abducted by a so-called UFO chariot. Let's read about it. Acts, the uh, first chapter. Okay, Acts the first chapter. It's also known as the ascension because of Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai ascended into that so-called UFO, that chariot, and the disciples saw it. As a matter of fact, it was a powerful sight. Let's read about it. And when he had spoken these things, who who who's this uh, uh, speaking? Yahweh Shai was speaking. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, right? They're looking at Yahweh Shai. He's telling them about the future. Right, he was taken up, and a cloud. This time, uh, the metaphor of a cloud is used. You should see, sometimes in the scriptures, metaphors like horses of fire, uh, whirlwinds, chariots are used to describe what what we know today as a so-called UFO. Okay, which are the chariots of Israel, Israel, not the chariots of all uh, all the other nations. The chariots of Israel. Only Israelites can go in those chariots. So check that out. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, just like Elijah was taken up. And a cloud received them out of their sight. Out of whose sight? Who was he with? He was with the disciples, which became apostles. Shortly after that, they became apostles. But the word apostle just means sent away. They were first disciples, which means... That's where you get the word discipline from. They were disciplined by Yahweh to be what? To be apostles. First they were disciples, then they became apostles. Apostle just means sent away. They were sent away to teach. Okay? Minus Judas Iscariot, of course. He betrayed Yahweh and, and he lost his position. <laughs> all right? And that was all set up by the Heavenly Father anyway. He had to fulfill prophecy. He was replaced by Matthias. Okay? So Acts 1 and 9, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of, out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly... By the way, what nationality was Yahweh Shai? Yes, that's right. He was an Israelite. He is an Israelite. That's why the chariot of Israel came and abducted him. Why? Because he was one of the reasons, one of the many reasons, is because he's an Israelite of the tribe of Judah. Remember, the chariots of Israel. Only Israelites can be on those chariots. Okay? 
So it says, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Those two men were angels, okay? Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Why was they gazing up into heaven? For the, mag the magnificence of that sight. They seen Yahweh Shai going up into the air, being abducted from them, going into that glorious chariot. That had to be a glorious sight, man, <laughs> to say the least. That's why they were gazing. Those were the rest, minus Judas Iscariot, of course. Those were the rest of the disciples who later became apostles. Okay, they were gazing. They were looking up into the heavens as Yahweh Shai was going up into those chariots. Or into that chariot, that specific chariot that came to get him. And he, where was he going? He was going back to the spirit world. All right, he was going back to sit by the right hand of his father. That was his position, prepared for him. That's where he was going. He was going to sit by the right hand side of his father, Yahweh, Because that was the position given to him for the work that he did on the planet earth and sacrificing himself. And you can read all about that in well, starting in Revelation, the fourth chapter, and you go right into Revelation, the fifth chapter, how he got that position, okay? Yahweh Shai, that is. And we're patiently waiting for him to come back on this planet Earth and set everything that's wrong to set it right. He's the only one that can do it. Yahweh Shai is the only one that can set everything that is wrong right now. All this madness that we're going through in this, this so-called existence, if you want to call it that, only Yahweh Shai can... can, can uh, can fix it. Only Yahweh Shai can fix it. It's as simple as that. Okay? And this is what we're patiently waiting for. So Acts 1 and 11 when, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you, just like Elisha, or just like Elijah rather, was taken up from Elisha. This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner. And that's what we're patiently waiting for. As ye have seen him go into heaven. So that's how Yahweh Shai is returning. All right. Behind, this takes us back. <clears throat> this takes us back to Isaiah 66 and 15 now. You see, you, you, you remember what the angels told the disciples? Let's read the 11th verse again. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? We know why they were gazing, because of the magnificent of the sight. This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, into the spirit world, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Right? So this is what we've been patiently waiting for. So in, here in Isaiah 66 and 15, which is a future prophecy, this is how he's coming back. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. Remember what came and got him? The chariots of Israel. So Yahweh Shai is coming back with an army of angels in the chariots of Israel, which are the so-called UFOs. And they're going to do two things. Number one, they're going to deliver the Lord's elect, help to deliver the Lord's elect, right? Pursuant to Matthew 24 and 30. And number two, bring destruction upon certain parts of the planet Earth, especially America, 100% along with those nuclear missiles. The combination of the nuclear missiles and the chariots of the Lord is going to set this place on fire 100%. And the only ones making it out of America will be the elect of the nation of Israel. Anyone who's teaching anything different, they are not knowing the scriptures. The Holy Spirit is not working with them and they're going to be judged for speaking lies on the Most High's word. Okay? Uh, how's that scripture go? Add not. Let's go to Proverbs 30 right quick. All right, Proverbs 30 and uh, 6. Add thou not unto his words. Right, so you got to be careful what you teach. You make sure you're not adding to the word nor taking away from it. Add thou not unto his words. Lease he, the heavenly father Yahweh, through his son Yahweh Shai, through the angels, lease he reprove thee, <laughs> correct you. And there, there's many ways the heavenly father through his only begotten son, through the angels, can correct you. Okay? It says, Least he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Let's read that in the NLT. Do not add to his words, or he may rebuke you, 
and expose you as a liar. Yeah, so all these false teachers, these false prophets, these false teachers, eventually they're going to be exposed, every last one of them, before they receive their judgment, okay? So it, it doesn't pay to add or take away from the word of the Heavenly Father. Eventually you will be exposed. All right. And Yahusha even made that statement. He said, There's nothing hidden that shall not be made manifest. So all the false teachers, all the false prophets, every last one of them are going to be exposed. So it's a good rule of thumb for us to teach the truth, 100 percent truth concerning the scriptures. Whether the truth be bitter or sweet, it's a good rule of thumb for us to teach 100 percent truth on these scriptures, man. To be totally sincere and honest concerning these scriptures. That's the best way to be, man. Isaiah 66, 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. So that's how he's coming back. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. To render his anger with fury. And his rebuke with flames of fire. Alright. And even the prophet Habakkuk. I think Habakkuk spoke about that. That same passage that Isaiah speaks about. Uh, let me see. Habakkuk, the third chapter. Yeah. Look, look at the subheading. God's deliverance of his people. Who are his people? The Israelites, beginning with the elect. Because only the elect are being delivered. So this is Habakkuk, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, upon Shiganoth. O Lord, I have heard thy speech. Where's the Lord's speech? These scriptures. That's the Lord's speech. Like when we're reading about Isaiah 66, 15, that's an example of the Lord's speech. So here Habakkuk said, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. So when you read Isaiah 66, 15 and you understand it, you can see the vision in your, in your, in your head, in your mind's eye. That's supposed to make you afraid. All right? You're supposed to be afraid and you're supposed to be afraid. In fear, making sure you're doing whatever you can to, to please the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son because of Isaiah 66, Isaiah 66 and 15 and scriptures like that. That's supposed to motivate us by fear. You know, there's a scripture where it speaks about Noah. He was moved with fear while he was building the ark. So he moved with haste, man, because the Heavenly Father was getting ready to bring a major judgment upon the planet Earth. Do you realize that Noah, his wife, his sons and their wives, a total of eight people, they were the elect of that day. Everybody else drowned, man. Everybody else drowned. Okay? So, Yahweh I gave a clue. He said, as in the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So, I mean, there are going to be a lot more people alive on the planet Earth than in Noah's day. Right? But... Compared to what happened during the time of Noah, it's going to be almost like that. A lot of people are going to die on this planet Earth, man. When Yahweh Shai comes back, the Isaiah 66, 15, the slain of the Lord shall be many. Okay, and why would, a great clue is what Yahweh Shai said. Why would he use the example of Noah um, describing his coming? What happened during the days of Noah? Again, Noah, his wife, his sons, their wives, a total of eight people they're the only ones that survived the destruction. What was the destruction? The, uh, the uh, waters covered the earth. And everybody else drowned. This time it's going to be fire. So that lets me know a lot of people are going to die on that day, man. The great day of the Lord. The prophet Zephaniah spoke about it. The great day of the Lord, man. We're going to come back to Habakkuk. Let's read about it. Zephaniah, the great day of the Lord. That's not going to be a nice day. So that lets me know that a lot of people are going to die on this planet Earth. And forget about America. America is going to be on heaps of uh, heaps of ashes, fire. Okay? You can forget about America. America is going to be wiped off the face of the Earth. Guaranteed. And when the fire dies down, this place is going to be a desert. Okay? Zephaniah 1 and 14. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near. And hasteth greatly. See? Even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Let's, let's go to Amos real quick. And then we're going to go back to Zephaniah. And then we're going to go back to Habakkuk. Let's read a little bit more about the day of the Lord. Because these, these, especially these wacky tacky Christians, they don't understand what's going to happen on the day of the Lord. They have no idea. 
okay um Amos 5, Amos 5.18, I believe it is. Amos 5, Amos 5 and 18. Yeah, here it is. Look, look at the subheading in the NLT. Warning of coming judgment. Now, this, this, this is a future prophecy here in Amos. This hasn't happened yet. All right, it says, Woe unto you, woe means destruction. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Wait a minute, the subject matter, um, of uh, Zephaniah, the first chapter, is the day of the Lord. Zephaniah 1 and 14, the great day of the Lord. See that? Is near. So let's go, let's see what Amos says. Amos, another prophet, right? Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? Yeah, especially the wacky tacky Christian. They have no idea what's really going to happen on the day of the Lord. The destruction that the earth is going to see on the day of the Lord. Okay? Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. We're going to read the same thing in Zephaniah. Okay, let's read that in the NLT. What sorrow awaits you who say, if only the day of the Lord were here. You have no idea what you are wishing for. That day will bring darkness, not light, especially to America, man. America is going to be completely dark, set on fire. Okay, destroyed, wiped out. And then it goes on to say, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. In other words, uh, no escape from the brutal destruction. Either animal can kill you brutally. A lion can kill you brutally or a bear. Either one. So what is that saying? Let's use extrapolation. No escape from brutal destruction. Because the, the uh, the lion can bring to you brutal destruction. The bear can bring to you brutal destruction. Okay, so no escape from brutal destruction. That's what the day of the Lord is going to be like. All right, brutal deaths. Okay, as if a man, because the, because the heavenly Father Yahweh is angry, and Yahweh Shai himself is angry. There's a scripture where Yahweh Shai said he's going to let out a roar as a travailing woman, before you know, like a battle cry when he comes back. The only ones he's going to have mercy on is the elect. Okay, everybody else, they're going to feel the wrath of Yahweh Shai and the angels, man. <laughs> as if, hey, we read about it. As if, a, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. And we're supposed to meditate on that every day, man. Every day. If you're really in this truth, if you really believe in this knowledge, this truth, you should be meditating on that day every day. The day of the Lord. What's going to happen on that day? How it's going to be? All right? You should be engulfed in it, man. Your mind, that is. You know, you're thinking about it. You're meditating on it. Okay? Because that's going to be, man. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. No escape. Or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. No escape. That's what that means. Okay, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? See, even very dark and no brightness in it. Oh, man. <laughs> Let's read that in the LLT, the 20th verse. Yes, the day of the Lord will be dark and hopeless. Well, this, well, hopeless for those that are not of the elect, especially here in America. No hope for you, no escape. Even the ones that's going to be in their bomb shelters and their underground retreats, that's going to be their tomb. <laughs> Simply put, okay, no escape. The only ones making it out of America alive will be the elect. Okay, the elect of the nation of Israel, man. All right, everybody else will die. Okay, it says, yes, the day of the Lord will be dark and hopeless without a ray of joy or hope. See that? So now let's go back to... Zephaniah, the first chapter. Zephaniah, the first chapter, pretty much says the same thing that Amos said. Zephaniah 1 and 14. Now, remember, I didn't put no list together. I did not put no list together. I'm simply going by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to channel the Holy Spirit to flow through me so I can bring out these scriptures for the edification of you, the listener. All right? especially for the hopeful elect. That's my job. That's what I, I was called in this ministry to do. 
Okay, Zephaniah 1 and 14, it says, The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. See? Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Look at that. Another example of the day of the Lord. The mighty man, that's a man of war, shall cry there bitterly. Why are they going to cry bitterly? For the things they're going to see. The destruction. The brutal destruction, man. Think about it, man. These ain't just words. All right? This is this is a, a glimpse into the future, man. All right? This, is the, this prophecy hasn't happened yet. Yet it's in the Old Testament. The prophet Zephaniah saw it all those years ago and wrote it down what he saw. This was a vision he actually saw. Okay? Remember, the prophets were called what? They were called seers. S-E-E-R-S. -E -E a seer is a visionary. Look up the word seer. S-E-E-R-S. -E -E a seer is a visionary. These are actually visions. When we read these words, these are actually visions that the prophets saw and they wrote them down. And when we read them, if the Holy Spirit is, is, is working with us, if we got that gift of, like the Apostle Paul spoke about spiritual gifts, if we got that spiritual gift, we can see it in our mind's eye, man. We can see it happening in our, that little movie is playing in our head as we read these words. Because it's going to happen, man. There's no doubt about it. It's going to happen. Okay? Let's read that in the NLT. It says, that terrible day of the Lord is near. Swiftly it comes, right? <laughs> A day of bitter tears. A day when even strong men will cry out. Damn. All right. Let's keep reading. That day is a day of wrath. A day of wrath. That's why in Amos it says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. You got these wacky tacky Christians with no understanding talking about the day of the Lord. You have no idea what's going to happen on the day of the Lord. The brutal death and destruction, man, that's going to be about, especially right here in America, man. That's the day when America is going to be no more. It's going to cease to exist. R.I.P. America, man, on that day. And it's only going to take the Lord one hour to destroy this place, man. One hour. For, for How's it go for? In one hour, so great riches come to naught. That's a prophecy in Revelation. The great riches is talking about is America. It'll come to naught. It'll come to nothing. All right? <laughs> so much for Donald Trump. Going to make America great again. Yeah, America is going to be great. Great destruction. That's all that's left for this place. America is going to be great again. It's going to be great in destruction. A great destruction. America is known as Babylon the Great, man. Revelation, the 18th chapter, goes into the destruction of, of, of America. Babylon the Great. Okay? Anyway, back to Zephaniah 1 and 15. That day is a, that day, is a day of wrath. A day of trouble and distress. See that? And you have to, you have to ask yourself, what kind of mindset would you have to have to survive that day? That's why, um, oh man, um, who shall abide the day of his coming? Let's get that. That's a good one to get. Who shall abide? That's why we, we're, getting, we're getting training right now through these scriptures to, to develop that mindset. Okay. Honestly, man, speaking to you brothers and sisters, man, of the household of faith, honestly, I feel like Within myself, I feel like I'm almost, I'm almost there with that mindset, man. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm consumed by the, the, the understanding of what's going to happen on that day, man. I want to see it, man. I really do, man. If it be the will of Yahweh Shemayah, I want to see it, man. I want to see this place be destroyed, ripped apart, man. I really do. That's all I think about, man. That's all I meditate on, to see the destruction, man. All right. So I want to bask in it. <laughs> Because I'm sick and tired and, and fed up of this place, man. I really am. Okay? Who shall abide? And that's the only thing that makes sense to me. No, nothing else makes sense to me anymore. Okay? Um, who shall abide the day of his coming? Joel. Joel. Now we're going to another prophet. Joel. Beautiful, man. Barakatai Yahweh Shabbat Yahushai for allowing me to bring these scriptures out. Joel, the second chapter, the 11th verse. It says, and the Lord, the, you notice the word Lord is all in caps. His name is Yahweh in, in, the, in the ancient Hebrew, Lashawan Kodash, Yahweh. It says, and Yahweh shall utter his voice before his army, right? For his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. <laughs> for he is strong that executeth his word. It's all about his word. 
Hey, and, and if you've been given the understanding of his word, you are truly blessed, man. Not too many people have the understanding of the Heavenly Father's word, the 100% of it. That's the greatest blessing you can ever receive in, in, in this so-called life, if you want to even call it that. All right. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Oh, come on. Man. It's unanimous. Amos said it. Joel said it. Zephaniah said it. Habakkuk, which we're going to go back to Habakkuk. We haven't forgotten Habakkuk. Habakkuk said it. So it's unanimous. What more proof do you need? The day of the Lord is coming, man. The day of the Lord is coming, man. The day of Yahweh Shimei Shai, man. And by the way, on that day, those names are going to be magnified. Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. And all the scoffers and the scorners, they're going to be silenced on that day. Not one of them is going to exist. Every last one of them is going to be silenced on that day. Right now, they got a lot of mouth. They talk a lot of shit. The scoffers and the scorners. Every last one of them motherfuckers are going to be silenced on that day. Guaranteed, man. Okay? And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. That's the angels. Okay? Matter of fact, his title is the Lord of hosts. You know what that means? The Lord of armies. The angels are his army. The missiles are his army. Okay? As a matter of fact, that, that, that's what that's talking about. In Joel, the second chapter, is talking about the missiles, his army. The missiles are part of his army. He created the missiles for that very purpose. Isaiah 54 and 16. Okay? He created the waster to destroy. <laughs> and the missiles are going to be flying back and forth on that day. Along with them chariots bringing... Oh, man, that's going to be a hell of a day. Now, you have to ask yourself, what kind of spirit must you have to be able to abide that day? Okay? <laughs> and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army... For his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Who can abide it? Let's read that DLT. The Lord is at the head of the column. He leads them with a shout. And we know he's coming back, the army of angels. Michael the archangel is going to be right with him. Michael the archangel. That's an angel created solely for war. Michael the Archangel, man, is going to be coming back with Yahweh Shai. So you know, man, you know Yahweh Shai going to be in business on that day. And that's what it's going to take to bring Esau's society down. That's what it's going to take, a, a, a great deliverance like that. A, gr a great destruction to turn things around, man, to turn the, the planet Earth back to righteousness like it's supposed to be. Second Peter 3 and 13, man, that's what it's going to take, man. Because this world is gone, man. The, the people of this world, especially so-called the right hand America. <sighs> anyway, let's just keep reading. It says, the Lord is at the head of the column. He leads them with a shout. This is his mighty army. And they follow his orders, right? The missiles, the angels, all right? The day of the Lord is an awesome, terrible thing. <laughs> Who can possibly survive? What was the answer to that? The elect. It's all about the elect. Okay? The elect, man. All right. Uh, let me get one more. And then we're going to go back to... We're going to go back to uh, the previous scripture. This time we're going to Malachi now. Check that out. Like I said, I didn't write these scriptures down. I did not write them down. All I did was write the title of the video. It is right there. I didn't write these scriptures down. So I'm being fed by the Holy Spirit. Malachi, the third chapter. And uh, I'll start at the first verse. The Purifier. That's another title for Yahweh Shai. The Purifier. Here comes the, here comes the Purifier. Coming to purify us. The hopeful elect. Uh, look at the subheaded on uh, the NLT side. The coming day of judgment. The coming day of judgment. This time it's Malachi. Malachi is speaking about it. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. That was fulfilled in Rabbi Abba Bivens. He, he was the first one to bring this truth on the scene. And then the truth grew, of course, like it is written in 2 Peter, growing the knowledge of the Lord, growing grace and knowledge of the Lord. So, of course, the truth grew or grew. It grew from Abba, Rabbi Abba Bivens to where it is now. You know, beginning to fell the past down. We're bringing out the 100% truth. Okay, 
This thing of ours grows, man. It grows and grows and grows. Just like Yahweh Shai said, it is living water. Living water is never stagnant. Living water constantly flows, and you got to keep up with it. Okay? So it says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Again, is it not written, the Heavenly Father is a power that hideth himself? So for a long time, the Heavenly Father hid himself from us. Now he's revealing himself to us, beginning with the elect, you see? And that's why the majority of people of the planet Earth don't know the Heavenly Father, neither his son, because he had hid, he hid himself from, for a period of time. Okay, he hid himself for a period of time. But now he's revealing himself through his word to us, us Israelites, beginning with the elect. You see? So it says, let's read that again. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Right, be before we came to, to this knowledge of truth, before we were called, we were seeking for the Lord, man. We really were. We were seeking because we knew within our spirits that something is wrong with this world. Something, something ain't right. I know that's how I felt before I was called into this knowledge of truth. I just didn't fit in. I knew it. I didn't fit in, man, in, in this world. I, I just, something's wrong with this world, man. I don't, I don't belong here. Right? That's the feeling that I had. Now I understand why I had that feeling, man, before I came into this knowledge of truth. Okay? And some of you brothers and sisters out there, you went through the exact same thing. Okay? I remember the testimony of Malcolm, uh, and he's real touching, man. It, that brother Malcolm, I, I, I love that brother, man. I hope, man, I hope he's a member of the elect. Very humble brother, the brother from Chicago, Elder Malcolm. All right? I remember he gave that testimony, how he was looking for the prophets. He really was looking for the truth, you know? So let's read on. It says, he shall prepare the way before him, before me, Salaki, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Right, well, guess who his temple is? We are. Did not Apostle Paul say that? He, he, he are the temple? First Corinthians, the third chapter goes into that. We're the temple, man. The temple is being rebuilt right now through us, beginning with the hopeful elect. Okay, it says, even the messenger of the covenant, that's, that's us, we, we, we're messengers of the covenant, the, 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 yeah, the covenant, the word covenant means agreement, okay, with the, the new agreement that Yahweh Shem is going to give us, okay, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, who we delight in, of course, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts, he, he, he has come, he's here, we're fulfillment of that. Now, here, here's the point. But who may abide the day of his coming? <laughs> who, may, who may abide the day of his coming? See, that, that's how terrible that day is going to be. Okay? How is Shai just going to pop up in the scene? Here I am. You elect ready? Okay, let's go. No, man. How is I go? When he comes to the planet Earth, everybody's going to know about it. Everybody's going to know about it. It's going to be a grand entrance. You know how someone makes a... Like, imagine if Trump now, right? Imagine when he becomes president, when he walks into a room, he makes a grand entrance, right? Well, how is I going to make a grand entrance when he comes to this planet Earth? Okay? Everybody's going to know about it. All right? So, it says, But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appear? What's the answer to that? The elect. That's why we're being prepared for that moment right now. All right, we're being prepared for that moment. Okay, we understand what it means, the day of the Lord. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and a full of soap. Right, he's going to cleanse us. We're going to be clean. We're going to be cleansed of all our wickedness. Our bodies are going to be changed, etc., etc. First uh, Corinthians goes into it. The Apostle Paul goes into it in his letters. All right. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. Right. That begins with Yahweh Shai. He's going to cleanse us like he was cleansed. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as, as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Right. And it ain't just the sons of Levi that he's going to purify. He's going to purify all the elect, which consist of all the tribes. Okay. All the elect. The members of the elect. Every last one of them are going to be purified. The men... Excuse me, the men 
as well as the women and the children that are delivered. All right. Yahweh Shai, the purifier. It's another one of his titles, the purifier. Okay. Uh, let's see. If it, that's it on that. We can go back to Joel 2. Let's read Joel 2 and 11 again. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. He, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. There is the point again. And who can abide it? So we're getting our minds prepared for it. Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me. This is a message to us. Turn you even to me, which we have done. Those of us that are involved in this ministry, those of us that risk our lives and freedom, like the brother said, um, Mal uh, Elder Mal Malcolma. For some reason, I got him on the mind. <laughs> uh, Elder Malcolma, like he says, um, uh, uh, you know, those that have uh, give up their lives and risk their lives and their freedom to do so, you know, go out on the street and teach and, and uh, be involved in this ministry. Right? The Heavenly Father said, Turn you even to me, which we have done. We turn to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai. We're begging for deliverance. Okay? It says, Turn you even to me with all your heart. See? With all our heart. That's all we think about, man. This reminds me of what Yahweh Shai said. If our eye be single, our whole body will be full of light. I, what does it mean if your eye is single? Meaning you're concentrating on one thing. Your mind's eye. Your mind. The eye is used as a metaphor for the mind in that scripture you're concentrating on one thing only one thing is on your mind and that is to master this knowledge this truth master these scriptures you know master ourselves hell it begins with ourself you know if we can't discipline ourselves then there's no way you're going to be into these scriptures really the best way to be in this world is to be a stoic a stoic you know somebody look up the term stoic and put it in the uh, in the in the um comment section that's the best way to be in this to, to be in, in in this uh ministry to be a stoic where you have pleasures but very few very few pleasures your main pleasure is getting into these scriptures we live a minimalist lifestyle we're not trying to live a, a, a delicate lifestyle oh hell no we live a min a, a minimalist lifestyle we have only a few comforts basic ne necessary comforts that we need to be around to do this ministry. That's it. Okay. But as far as living a delicate lifestyle. and the, Oh no. That ain't for us man. Because this, this, as it is written. The fashion of this world shall pass away. As it is written. We, we always keep that in mind. The fashion of this world shall pass away. Joel 2 and 12. It says. Therefore also now saith the Lord. Turn you even to me with all your heart. Meaning all our minds. This is all we think about. This is all we're concerned about. This is all we care about. This knowledge, this truth, mastering it, these scriptures. Turn you even to me with all your heart and with fasting. Sometimes we got to fast. We do the Day of Atonement fast. Fasting is good for the spirit. Okay? And with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Yeah, well, if you get heavy into this knowledge, this truth, you're going to be in a state of weeping and mourning. You're going to be in a state of grief. Everything around you is going to piss you off, okay? Because you know, you know, you know it's, it's not right, you know? And, and that makes it hard to live in this world, but we got to endure it. That's why it is written, endure hardness as a good soldier. It's something we got to endure, okay? So the Lord said to turn to him with weeping, fasting, weeping, and mourning. That's why if I hear an Israelite say, yeah, you know, ever since I've been in this troop, God has blessed me with a beautiful home and a beautiful family and a nice vehicle. And I know that person ain't really in the truth. Okay. Because <laughs> if you come, when you come, when you're called into this truth, we caught hell in the world. No, we, caught, we really catch hell when we're called into this knowledge of truth. But the difference is, is to purify us. Okay. That's the difference. It tells you that in Hebrews 2 and 10, that the suffering is, is there to purify us. Right, it's there to make us stronger, to build up our character. That's why we go through the sufferings, so we can be built up for that day. Because I keep telling you, brothers and sisters, what kind of mentality you gotta have on that day to survive the day of the Lord. You saw the scriptures, okay? That's gonna be a hell of a day. So we be uh, we're going through boot camp right now, okay? More and more, the heavenly Father's giving us a spirit of indifference to this world. We 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 don't, we don't care about this world and and certain people in it. 
Okay, we more and more we're becoming indifferent to the people of this world, to this world period. We just want to see it destroyed. Okay, because we, we understand what's on the other side once it's destroyed. This world, this society, we understand it's going to be a society of righteousness. Replace is going to replace wickedness. We understand this place must be destroyed. This society must be destroyed. We understand that. Okay, so... There you go. Uh, let's get back to, so we read Joel, we read Zephaniah. Let's read a little more on Zephaniah, get ready to wrap this up. Zephaniah, the first chapter, the 15th verse, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, the same thing the other prophets said, a day of clouds and thick darkness, all right? A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. All right, let's read that in the NLT. That, ter that terrible day of the Lord is near. Swiftly it comes, a day of bitter tears, a day, even a day when even strong men will cry out. It will be a day when the Lord's anger is poured out, a day of terrible distress. It will also be a day where the elect is, discovered, uh, is uh, delivered, a day of terrible distress and anguish. A day of ruin and desolation, right? The desolation and ruin of America, man. That's going to be on that day. Totally desolate, totally ruined. Okay, yes, America is going to become great again. Great in destruction. And good riddance, man. Good riddance to this bitch. This whore called America. The whore of Babylon. Good riddance, man. And not only that, the society that, that fuels it will be destroyed right along with it. Okay, that's the, the rule of the top international banking families. On that day, their rule is going to be no more. And as a matter of fact, they're going to be eventually gathered and brought into slavery. They're going to be the first crop of slaves that we get, that we inherit, as being members of the elect. Oh, it's going to be beautiful, man. It's going to be so beautiful, man. A day of ter terrible distress and anguish, a day of ruin and desolation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. You know, uh, 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 not too long ago, Trump called us the prophets of doom, basically. The prophets of doom. Yes, that's what we are, the prophets of doom. And we, and we, 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 we proudly accept that title. We are the prophets of doom. Because that's what this bitch needs, America. It needs doom, doom and gloom. That's what it needs. It should have got that 10 years ago. <laughs> 20, 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, fuck this bitch, man. Habakkuk, the third chapter, uh, going back to um, uh, uh, the second verse. O, o Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. Right. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years, which he has done through us. We're his work that he has revived. He's brought us back to our remembrance of who we are. He's brought us back to the remembrance of what was written by these, by these prophets many years ago. We now remember, oh, so that's what the prophet meant. Oh, so that's what Zephaniah means. Oh, oh, oh. He's brought us back, man, to our remembrance, man. I have heard thy speech and was afraid. Oh, Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. He has done that. He's, we're his work. Not vocab alone. Vocab alone is not the Lord's work. Okay? <laughs> He's not the Lord's work, man. He doesn't have the truth. These wacky-tacky Christians, they don't have the truth. We're the Lord's work, man. Beginning with Rabbi Abba Bibbins. Right on down, the true men of the of, that were chosen for this ministry, they're the Lord's work, man. Okay, it says, "Revive thy work in the midst of the years." It, is, it has been revived in the midst of the years. Make known in wrath, remember mercy. We understand wrath is coming, so it said, "Remember mercy." Right, that's our plea. That's our prayer. The word prayer means to beg. We're asking you, how about Shemiah Shai? Please have mercy upon us. Please have mercy upon us in your wrath. And, and Yahweh Bashim Yahushai has every reason to be angry, to be wrathful. Look at the wickedness of this world, man. You don't think that the day is coming when all this wickedness is going to be put to an end? <laughs> uh, let's read on. It says, the heavenly father came from uh, Teman and the holy one from Mount Paran, Salah. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. Right, it reminds me of how he came to Moses to deliver the law. The same thing is said in Deuteronomy 33, okay? 
and his brightness was as the light. Now, this is talking about when Yahweh Shai comes back to bring the judgment. Wait a minute, what does it say in the, the subheading there? God's deliverance of his people. So this is this is a dark saying for Yahweh Shai when he comes back. His brightness was as the light, right? Because he's, he's coming back with those so-called UFOs, those chariots. And one thing they possess is great lights, great bright lights. It looks like they're on fire. So it says, his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand. Now, in the Red Bible, printed by the Jehovah Watchtower Society, I've always told you about that Red Bible, there's a passage in there where it says, or bright beams coming out of his side. What do you think that's talking about? The laser beams of fire that's going to come out, them chariots, destroying the infrastructure, man, setting it on fire, setting people on fire. That's going to happen on that day. That's all part of the great day of the Lord, man. Okay? His brightness was as the light. He had horns. That's bright beams of light. It's in the Red Bible. He had horns coming out of his hand. And there was the hiding of his power. Man, that's going to be something, man. And there are movies that that um, that illustrate that. The movie War of the Worlds. The first one made back in, what, 1953? Illustrates that. You see the chariots coming. You see the laser beams of fire shooting down on people, burning them up, burning the armies up. That's going to happen. That's literally going to happen. Esdras saw that. We can read about that in Esdras. Second Esdras, the 13th chapter. Okay? Also, in the new one made, um, well, not so new, 2005 with Tom Cruise, War of the Worlds, there's a remake, the same thing. You saw the fire coming down from the so-called UFOs, the chariots. People were running, people were scared. Okay, this is what we're reading about here in Habakkuk. Habakkuk saw that in the vision. Let's read that in the NLT. His coming is as brilliant as the sunrise. Uh, yeah, well, the, the, uh, uh, how's that go in Revelation? Until the day star rise up in our hearts. Yahweh Shai is also known as the day star. He's bringing the light. Okay, Yahweh Shai is bringing the light, man. His coming is as brilliant as the sunrise. Rays of light flash from his hands. Those are the laser beams of fire coming out of them chariots. Okay, coming out of, char out of them chariots. Where his awesome power is hidden. Look at that, man. Look at that. Reading on, it says, before him went the pestilence. See, again, another word for pestilence is plague. It tells you about that in Zechariah, the 14th chapter. This shall be the plague. The plague is the missiles and the chariots of the Lord bringing that destruction. Also in Zechariah, the fifth chapter. When the Lord asked Zechariah, what, what do you see? He said he, he sees a chariot. And then the Lord told him, this shall be a curse that shall go forth over the face of the whole earth. The, the, the so-called UFOs is a curse to Esau and his society, his kingdom. Because they're coming to bring down his kingdom. Yahweh Shai is coming in those so-called UFOs, those chariots, to bring down the kingdom of Esau, to destroy it. Okay? Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. That's why in Zechariah, the, the 5th chapter, it speaks about this will be a curse going forth over the face of the whole earth. The so-called UFOs that the prophet Zechariah saw. Okay? Before him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at his feet. <laughs> what do you think the burning coals is talking about? Huh? <laughs> he stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. So he's been, he's coming with some serious destruction, Okay. Then as you read on, Habakkuk is asking the Lord, were you displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thine wrath against the sea? It's going to be a day of wrath, man. That thou didst ride upon thine horses, the chariots, and thy chariots of salvation. See? Thy chariots of salvation. Salvation for who? The elect. So now you understand Isaiah 66, 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead, judge. The word there for plead in Hebrew is judge. Will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Look at that. Let's read that in the NLT. It says, uh, it says see the Lord is coming with fire and his swift chariots roar like a whirlwind. He will bring punishment 
with the fury of his anger and the flaming fire of his hot rebuke, the Lord will punish the world by fire, and by his sword will he judge the earth, and many will be killed by him. Many will be killed by him. Now, who are the only ones that's going to make it out of here? The elect. The elect. Let's go back to two scriptures, and then we're going to end this lesson. Matthew 24 and 30. And hopefully you were edified by this lesson. If you was, a, a, as usual, drop a line in the comment section. Let me know you were edified. Matthew 24. You know, we do these videos for your exhortation and your edification. That's what it's all about, man. Forget about empty vanity. You know, we don't need it, man. All we need to know is that you've been edified and exhorted and we've done our job. We've done what we're called to do. That's it, man. Matthew 24 and 30, it says, look at that, the subheading, the glorious return. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now you understand what that means. The tribulation of those days. Shall the sun be darkened? Now you understand what that means. The pro all the prophets saw it. The darkness that's coming. And the moon shall not give a light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Now you understand why that's going to happen, the, the judgment that Yahweh is coming with. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Those are the chariots. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. From one end of heaven to the other. What's the title of this video? Concerning America, Babylon the Great. Only Israelites to be delivered will be the elect. He shall gather what? His elect from the four winds. That's north, south, east, and west. Especially here in the west. The majority of the elect will be delivered here in the west. That's why it is written in, uh, um, how's it go in uh, uh, the Apocrypha, Baruch. It's, it shall be... Uh, Looking toward the east gathered from the west. Okay, looking toward the east gathered from the west. Okay, so it says, uh, shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the one end of heaven to the other. Another scripture that just came to mind is Isaiah 26 and 20, one of my favorites. Talking about the deliverance of the elect. Let's read it. Isaiah song of trust in, Yah in Yahweh's protection. Look at that. Look at that. Isaiah 26 and 20. Let's read. It says, Come my people. Look at that. Restoration for Israel. It begins with the elect. Come my people. Enter down into thy chambers. That's the chariots that Yahweh is coming with. Delivering the, the elect. And it's Apostle Tal's thesis that um, all of the elect will be housed in the chariot Yahweh is coming in. That makes sense. Because that would truly be the marriage of the Lamb. In Revelation 19 and 7, it speaks about the marriage of the Lamb. Yahweh Shai is that Lamb. The word married means joined together. How are we going to be joined together with Yahweh Shai? Well, he's going to deliver us and have us in the same chariot he's going to be in. So we're going to be with the Lord. We're going to be with Yahweh Shai. All right? It says, Come, my people, into thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. That's literally, kind of reminds you of Noah. Right? Wait a minute. Noah entered into the ark. Noah, his wife, his sons, and their wives. A total of eight people, they crawled into the ark. Right? They crawled into the ark, and what happened? The Lord shut the doors of the ark, and all hell broke loose. So there you go. Same thing here. Isaiah 26 and 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Remember, these are the chariots of Israel. Only Israelites can go in there. Full cab. Only Israelites can go in there. The chariots of Israel. That's what Elisha called them when he saw them. You can't get around that scripture. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. We know what the indignation is. We read about it through the different prophets. Malachi, Micah, Zephaniah, Habakkuk, Isaiah. Come on, man. Let's read that in the 20th verse in the NLT. Go, go home, my people. And that's exactly where we're going. We're going home, man. We're going home. <laughs> like my man Zabala one, inside joke. That happened years ago. There's this guy that used to be part of Elder Pastor's camp, Zabala one. And he made a statement, man, I want to go home. <laughs> you know, but it's the way he said it. You know? <laughs> Anyways, inside joke. Uh, restoration of... This is back during the 44th Street and Broadway 
days when we had the camp on 44th Street and Broadway in Manhattan, okay? Restoration for Israel, 20th verse. Go home, my people, and lock your doors. Hide, the, hide yourselves for a little while until the Lord's anger has passed. Right, and that's talking about the elect that are delivered in those chariots, okay? For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place. Remember, he was hiding himself. Now he comes out of his place. <laughs> For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place. Come, he comes from being hidden. Verily thou art a power that hideth thyself. That's why the majority of the people of the world don't know the Heavenly Father, neither his son. They are a power that hide themselves. But now they come to reveal themselves. Check that out. The first thing the Heavenly Father reveals is his name and his son's name. Okay? For behold, and we the hopeful elect, we've known that. Okay? But the world is getting ready to know it. The world is getting ready to know the names Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Those names are going to be magnified. Guaranteed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. That's, that's all you see going on in this world. Iniquity, man, on, in various forms. Iniquity among the men. Iniquity among the women. It's, it's, it's got to be put to an end, man. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth. For their iniquity, the earth also shall disclose her blood. There's going to be a lot of people killed on the planet earth, man. And shall no more cover her slain. There you go. Oh, that's a perfect way to end that. Isaiah 26 and 20. Powerful, man. All right. And uh, finally, you know what? Let's end on 1 Thessalonians, the uh, fourth chapter. Because it does say, comfort, wherefore comfort one another with these words. So we'll end on that. This is the great deliverance of the elect. Uh, First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, the beginning of the 14th verse. Let's see. Uh, it says, for if we believe that Yahweh Shai died and rose again, which of course that's what we believe, and that's the cornerstone of our faith. Even so them also which sleep in Yahweh Shai will Yahweh bring with him. Those are the brothers that died in his faith. And then we would have martyrs. In the time of Jacob's trouble, you're going to have brothers that die for this faith, martyrs, brothers that have been dead for this faith, and brothers that, that are going to die for this faith, sacrifice themselves. Remember, as it is written, we, we are living sacrifice unto Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, Romans the 12th chapter. This is a sacrifice. So our lives are not our own. Our lives are in the hands of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. We have dedicated, not dedicated, dedicated our lives to Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. All right? It's, that's what, that's, when you were called into this, that's what you did. Whether you know it or not, you dedicated your life, you're supposed to, to Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. So whatever comes with it, we just got to deal with it, okay? First Thessalonians 4, chapter 15, verse. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Those are the ones that died in the faith. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. This is what we're patiently waiting for. The day of our Lord, we know what it means. And the voice of the archangel. And... Uh, with the voice of the archangel, right? Michael, Michael the archangel is coming with the Lord. And with that's pursuant to Daniel, the 12th chapter. And with the trump of Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, and the dead in Yahweh Shai shall rise first. So the brothers that died, they're going to come right out the graves. Because no one ever dies to the Heavenly Father, as it is written. All, for all live unto him. No one dies to the Heavenly Father. Definitely ain't nothing but a separation of body and spirit. That's all it is. Your spirit lives on. Okay? 17 verse, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. They, pff, th does that sound familiar? Isn't that what happened to Elijah? Isn't that what happened to Yahweh Shai? Now it's going to happen to us. Okay? <laughs> then we which are alive and remain, we'll be so, by that time, we'll be so glad to get the fuck out of here. You won't believe. Because this place is going to be on fire. This place is going to be <laughs> a cauldron of destruction, man. A cauldron of destruction. That's what this place is going to be. Okay. And the hell with this goddamn place called America, man. And it's fit. It's only fitting that this place should remain a desert. All the hell that we caught here, man. All the bullshit we have, we have, we went through and are going through. <laughs> then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Literally. 
going to be in the same chariot he's going to be in. That truly is the marriage of the Lamb, pursuant to that scripture. Revelation 19 and 7. Then it goes on to say, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. See that? That's why I read the scripture. So that's a good time to end it. Hopefully you were edified by this uh, exhortation. Uh, I hope hopefully you were exhorted as well as edified. And I'll see you in the next one.